As an IT professional, it's almost impossible to troubleshoot Windows effectively if you do not understand the Windows registry. So this is going to be a very hands-on as well as practical presentation on a technical look at the Windows registry. Let's begin our technical dive into this subject by first asking what is the registry? The registry is a hierarchical database. There are critics that claim it's just a flat database, but one thing for sure, everyone agrees it's complex. The hierarchical databases have a tree structure and the registry does have a tree structure. The registry is a hierarchical database that applications and system components store and retrieve configuration data. It's the repository for both system-wide operating system and per user settings. Currently, hierarchical databases are still widely used, especially in applications that require very high performance and availability, such as banking and telecommunications. The registry saves all data in binary form for speed and memory efficiency. This is very important for Windows. In understanding what the question, what is the registry, let's first go and find the files that make up the registry. So I'm going to go to my virtual machine and do reg edit. Most of you are familiar with the reg edit. I'm going to run it as an administrator. You don't have to. And I have opened it up to a location. You can see I'm in, let me scroll this up and over. I've started with the H key, which is called a root key. And I went down to system control set 001 control. And let's scroll down here till we get to a sub key called hive list. This is a very interesting registry key because in it shows us the path and the name of the files that make up the registry. And you can see some of them, this is, we've got the BCD file, which is your hive that controls how Windows boots. That's actually in the UEFI system partition. So I'm going to launch disk management. And you can see I've got a 99 megabyte EFI system partition, and that is where that BCD hive is located. And that's a critical boot registry hive. You'll notice the rest of them are in hard disk volume four, which is C drive. They're in Windows system 32 config. And notice most of the hives that make up the registry are in that same folder. Default, which is going to be our HK user, system, software, security, SAM. We have a few profile registry files, ntuser.dat, and this is for services. Go here and launch service, and I'm going to launch my service app. And why, why that is important, if you notice that there is an account called local system, and that file is, this registry is responsible for that local service account. There's also some of these services that are being run by a network service account, and that is being taken care of by this registry hive network service. We have John with his own ntuser.dat. This is his hive that represents his user specific information. And we also have for John a user class.dat. And you can see it's an app data, local, Microsoft Windows. What's so nice about this hive list is it shows you where your registry files are. The rest of these files have to do with an app over here. This is a new app from Microsoft. It's called Your Phone. It allows you to take your Android phone and tie it into Windows. I've tried it. I wasn't impressed. It couldn't stay synced, so I gave up on it. But you can see it also has put some files into the registry. So back to that question, what is a registry? It's strategically located and placed files on the hard drive that are loaded into memory that provide the massive configuration information for the operating system and every user that's logged on or part of the system. The configuration manager is an executive component of the Windows kernel and is responsible for implementing the registry database. 
Here's a basic block diagram of Windows, and you can see it's divided into user mode and kernel mode. You'll notice under kernel mode, you have a block there called executive. That's where the configuration manager is. So here we have a more granular view of that same thing. Here we can see the configuration manager actually in a block. The configuration manager is responsible for loading the hives into memory and allowing applications and systems to do their reading and writing querying of the database. Here I have the classic registry editor open and you can see I've got my computer highlighted. If you look at the five keys that are below it, most of you are comfortable with these. These are the root keys of the registry and they make up the tree structure that we've talked about in the hierarchical database. Have you ever wondered why they all begin with H key? H key classes roots, H key current user, H key local machine. Have you ever wondered why it's H key? Let me open up H key local users and you can see there's lots of sub keys under H key local user. Lo I'm sorry, H key local machines. But none of them begin with H key BCD or H key hardware. They just begin with a key name. Only these five begin with H key. Why? Because this explains how applications and processes and the operating system access the registry. They access the registry via handles. That's what the H means in each of those names, handles. Let me explain. Here's Process Explorer, and Process Explorer allows me to see visually all the processes and applications running in user mode. When an application, I'm going to double click this text file and it's going to open Notepad. When Notepad runs, it's an application or process, it needs to access folders, files, registry keys, and other resources, graphical objects. When it does, any of any process or application in Windows wants to access those type of resources, it does it via handles. So here in Notepad, I'm going to scroll down and we'll look at Notepad and we can come over to the column that's dealing with handles. And you can see Notepad is using 264 handles. So we know that some of those handles are tied to registry keys, folders, files, graphical objects. And we can actually drill in and see what those are. I'm going to come up here and show my lower pane. And I've asked to see in the lower pane handles. So I'm selecting Notepad. And you can see all the handles that are being used by Notepad. And guess what? It's accessing a registry key. Under H key current user, is, it's accessing the classes key or software classes local settings key. But notice it doesn't go to just this sub key. It starts with the handle key, the H key current user. If it wants to access a key in H key local machine, it opens the H key local machine, the handle key. So always applications access the registry via these keys. It may want a sub key many layers down, but it always begins by requesting an H key root key. Here we have OneDrive and I've slide down and we can find the registry. And notice no matter what sub key it wants to access, it always accesses it via an H key, a handle key. So the registry provides these five keys. These are handle keys. No matter what sub key they need, they must access one of these root handle keys to access that value. Often technical documentation will not use the full name of a root key in your registry. Instead, they'll use the abbreviation. So it's important for text to become aware of the appropriate abbreviations for the root keys. Many times they simply won't use those long names. When we open up the registry editor, we see five keys. Most of you are very comfortable with this, but only two of them are really legitimate pointers to the registry. One is HKEY local machine and HKEY users. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Vanderpool, what about the others? 
HKEY current config and HKEY classes, classes roots are really there for backward compatibility. HKEY current user is there strictly to allow applications to quickly access registry information representing the current logged on user. HKEY local machine is the most comprehensive of all the root keys. It represents the BCD, the hardware, the security accounts manager, which is SAM, security policies, all the software installed on your system, and the operating system, which is represented by the system. HKEY local machine is made up of many hives, and I've got all the hives listed with their paths and their names. So C colon Windows System32 config, and then we have the hive system, the hive software, the hive SAM security, and then in the, system, the EFI system partition, we have the BCD hive. That is all being pulled up and shown when you launch the HKEY local machine. HKEY users is its hive is found in the system32 config and the hive is called default. All the users that are registered on that PC, the local PC, are saved in the HKEY users key. They're listed by SIDS and if you'll notice that's the S-1-5-18, 19, 20, 21. Those security IDs are how they list the users. There is one that's called dot default and that represents the system profile under which the system account runs. That's indicated by the blue arrow. That's very similar to the root user in Linux. H key user key also points to a hard drive path called C colon users. Most of you are comfortable with this. This is where users have their profiles stored. H key current config is simply a shortcut to the H key local machine sub key called current. This is really there for backward compatibility. I believe it was XP when XP was using hardware profiles. HKEY classes roots is again, it's a copy of the following HKEY local machine subkey called classes, indicated by the green arrow. And then last, HKEY current user represents the logged on user from the HKEY user hive. Let me share a couple concepts that have really helped me understand the registry better. We've, we've already confirmed that HKEY local machine and HKEY users are really the only two keys that are legitimate point into the registry. So think of this as one hard drive. HK local machine is a hard drive. HK users as a hard drive. So as we look at HK local machine, we think of that as our hard drive. We see all these sub keys that represent directories on that hard drive. These are all called keys. In this particular key, I see we have a bunch of value names. Think of these as files in this directory. And I know it's a key, but think of it as a directory. These are all file names in the directory. And each file name, each file contains data. So in this case, the name of this file is baseboard manufacturer. This is baseboard product, bias release date. So in the registry, we call them value names. Think of them as file names. And in each one of these files is data. That data could be a ASCII text, such as Microsoft Corporation, or it could be a date, or the file could contain a, re a version information, or the file could contain hexadecimal information or 32-bit binary information. So each of these value names, think of them as files. And in the data is what is in that file. So what kind of data can we store in the registry? What can we put in those files? We can put various types of specific data. This is a chart that shows you the different kinds of data that you can put in a value name. You can do fixed length Unicode strings. Here we got reg binary, arbitrary length binary data, reg D word, 32 bit number. And you can go on and on. You can look at this list. This is the type of data that you can put in the registry. Here's the takeaway. Reg binary and reg D word make up 94% of all the type of data in the registry. All the other ones that are in this chart are very limited and used very little. 94% of the registry is either reg binary or reg D word.
IT professionals often have to use registry editor and edit the registry to fix something or add a feature or correct a problem. So it's something we do. There's a couple things I want to share that are good tips and tricks and some good best practices. So in this case, I'm a fan of right mouse context menu. So I'm often in, let's say, a directory like program files. And I would like to use the shift key and right mouse click and get access to command line window. I want to pop up a command line window right here at program files. Well, Microsoft is pushing PowerShell, so they've moved that out and they've put PowerShell, which is great, but don't get rid of my command line. So I'm gonna look for an article or somewhere where they have a registry hack that I can put that feature back in. So I found some articles that show me how to find a registry key and fix that and add that feature back into my right mouse click context menu. There, in this article, they're giving me the path to the registry sub key. In this case, they're showing me in the article right here, and I'm going to take that without the, and I'm going to write, I'm going to copy that. And what I'm going to do is I, I could drill down and try to find it that way, but I'm not. I'm just going to replace this command line window and just type it in. That gets me right to where I want to go. That saves me a lot of time. So based on the information in the article, it is going to be this sub key and the value names or the files here that we're going to modify. Now, before I do anything, I am going to export this key as a backup. So I'm going to go to the export and I'm just going to call this my CMD key. And I'm going to save this because if something goes wrong, something fails, something, a user, I'm doing this for a user and two weeks from now, they don't, they want it re put back. I'm going to keep this backup key of this registry element. I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click and change permissions. In here, I'm going to choose the application package, go to advanced. And before the owner was trusted installer and I went to change and added myself and I'm logged on as John, I've added John as the owner. And then I applied that. Then I'm going to go ahead and come back to administrators in the access list and I'm going to check the full control. And that gave me rights finally to the key so that I could modify it. Now I can go to the value name. And in this case, I did this value name and I right mouse click and I renamed and I typed in show based on velocity ID. And when I changed that, it then gave me back. Now notice I did not have to hit the save button. If I go to my folder now and I pull up notice my open command line window here so now I have both my PowerShell option and my command line window here so the be accurate be careful and back up your keys so you can restore later over the many years of Windows, Microsoft has taken a real hit on the subject of registry. It has been less than stable and has caused so many problems, especially for the enterprise support side. Now in the Windows directory, I'm in the system 32 and in config, and this is where our registry hives, almost all of the registry hives are here. If you've been in here lately, you notice it's got a lot of stuff in here. Let's take a look at what has happened since Vista and why all of these files are in our config folder. Be sure if you go there and you don't see all the files that I just showed you, make sure you change your folder view options. Make sure you allow, you can see hidden files, folders, and drives. I always uncheck the hide extensions because I'm, I'm a tech, I want to see extensions. And then uncheck hide protected operating system files. If you don't do that, you won't see these files. Windows was a, Windows registry was a database and it was forever getting corrupted and Microsoft was taking some real heat because of this problem. It just wasn't consistent. With the advent of Vista, Microsoft introduced the Kernel Transaction Manager. This allowed, set the stage or the platform that allowed Microsoft to begin to take many things like NTFS, and the registry and began to apply this transactional manager feature to these critical elements. So now the registry has is protected during updates. It has a robust transaction rollback and error recovery capabilities. It is protected from multiple source changes and it gives it all of the database ACID protections, which are known as atomosity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Now, 
in the config folder is a subdirectory called txr. And this is where the registry transactional manager stores the files that it needs to use. When you look at your config folder, you'll see your t lowercase x uppercase r folder. So because of this new technology, registry hives have a number of new extensions. If the registry hive has no extension, it's a complete copy of the hive. It's the actual running version of the hive. If there's adult alt, it's a backup copy. If it's a dot log, it's a transaction log of changes to the keys and values entries in the hive. If it's a dot SAV, it's a backup copy of the hive. This is relatively new. So now in the configuration folder, the configuration manager now uses log hives as a way to make sure that the registry hive is always in a recoverable state. The configuration manager uses a dual logging scheme. That's why you'll see a hive with log one, log two. When the configuration manager schedules a lazy write operation, or what is known as a hive sync, once it's scheduled, within five seconds, data will be permanently written to the registry hive. Windows 10 has definitely shown an improvement in registry resilience because of this technology. Now, I have spent a great deal of time showing you the registry via one program called the Registry Editor. But I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into this and tell you that this Registry Editor does not show you a complete picture of the registry. This is really important to understand. There is no complete registry until the configura ma configuration manager loads all the hives into an actively running copy of Windows. Developers and APIs in Windows need a set of registry hives that are considered volatile. In other words, they're only built every time you boot up. When you shut down, those volatile registry hives go away. When you have your registry hives on your hard drive and Windows boots up, the configuration manager actually creates a set of volatile registry hives. That then makes up the entire picture of the registry. And that is what APIs and developers use. Here's a complete chart of what is shown in memory from the registry. While we're on the topic of registry and memory, I'm going to launch the System Internals Process Explorer. If we launch System Information, there's a section called Kernel Memory, and it includes non-paged kernel memory. In other words, it's never paged out to a page file. And then there's sections of kernel memory that can be. It's in this section here that we actually put our registry. It can be paged out if necessary, but it is always in this kernel memory section. Here I'm back to my virtual machine and I've launched this time Process Monitor. This is a tool I really love because it helps me understand how Windows works. Process Monitor I'm, allows me to see all the events that are taking place by threads and processes, network activity, by file access, and registry. So I'm going to turn on the capture feature. And if you'd like to learn about this particular tool, there'll be a link to a vi in the video description that will take you to a video I did that really walks you through how to use this tool. But let's go. I'm going to turn off. I don't want to see threads and processes, and I don't want to look at network activity, and I don't want to look at file access. I want to focus on what is the operating system doing in relative to the registry. And if you notice, over here we see the processes names, and over here we see query registry activity. And you can see, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to do the auto scroll. Actually, I'm going to turn that back on. And you can actually see how busy the operating system is in its querying, looking at, reading, interacting with the registry. There is no time, even when your PC seems to be doing nothing, that it is not engaged in the registry. There are four principal times when the registry is heavily read. First, during the initial boot process. This is where the key, BCD, is heavily involved. Second, during the kernel boot process, where the kernel settings, device drivers, system elements, 
memory manager, process manager, all of those are being configured. That's during the kernel boot. Third is during your logon. When you log on, there's a heavy use of reading the HKEY current user and determining wallpaper, network drive map mapping, screen saver, menu behavior, icon placement, startup programs, and on and on. So this is another, this is the third time that Windows heavily reads the registry. And fourth, during application startup. When you start an application, there is a heavy reading of the registry. There is so much to talk about in the subject of registry, especially to the techs and, and administrators. I have included in the notes and in the slide deck that you can download from the video description a lot of additional information that I will not cover in the video. We can't end this discussion without talking about backups. So I'm going to go to restore, restore points and launch my restore point, my system properties under system protection. And this is where your restore point software is controlled and managed. Remember the latest versions of Windows have actually turned restore points off. This is something that if you're supporting users, especially with critical, critical desktops, I would highly recommend you get and make sure that restore points are on. Restore points are all about backing up and, and the ability to restore your registry. So if you're not doing this, you need to do it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because there's thousand videos on restore points on YouTube, but I would encourage you to set your configuration, the amount of data that you use to at least 10% of your hard drive. Why? Because it gives you more restore points to choose from when you get into a pickle. When you have a problem, you want as many backups as possible. If you've been in IT very long, you'll know that there are times that even restore points do not work. And it's always nice to have an ACE in your back pocket. And that is found in the reg back folder under config. If you look at the latest versions of Windows have turned off this task that Microsoft used to run and it would back up all your registry hives. As you can see, I have a full copy here. This is really, really nice. This is for manual restore. In other words, you have to have a offline disk that you can boot to or an offline flash drive that you boot to and you can manually simply copy these and overwrite your existing files in your config folder. This is a manual process, but boy, it has saved my hide more than once but it is now turned off by default, the newest versions of Windows. So you can turn it back off. I'll link you to an article that you can turn this back on. This is really nice to have on your own desktop and any critical desktops that you support on the enterprise. Thank you.